Medrash Rabbah says that Moshe Rabbeinu was told on Sinai that the Jews had created the, the Egel. He doesn't break the Luchas until he goes down and sees for himself. Medrash asks why he waited. The Medrash says that if a Dayan, it's to be instructive for Dayonim for future generations, that here there was no question of a lack of credibility. He heard from the Rebani Shlalem. But it's to teach future Dayas that when there is a possibility that a Dayan can see for himself, he should wait until he actually witnesses the, the particular Avera so that he can respond to it in, in another, on another level. There's an Itziv in Parshas, in Breshis. Nitziv says on Vayara Shem Ki Tov that the Rebbeinu Shlonim implanted into vision the ability to see, even though there it's talking about the Ria Kaviyochel of the Rebbeinu Shlonim, which is not biological vision, but it's again using that terminology to teach us something. The Rebbeinu Shlonim implanted in Ria something that doesn't exist in the other its senses. And that is a capacity to internalize, to be nispoil. We internalize and we act upon it. Bohoraya says the Nitziv that Moshe Rabbeinu heard on Sinai that the Rebbeinu Shalom told him, made the eagle, but he doesn't break the luchas until he sees for himself. He's in a spoil when he sees it for himself. So says the Nitziv. The Svona on the spot says, Moshe Abenu, as it were, was missing a piece of data. He heard they made the eagle, but he didn't know they were doing it, but Tupim and they were singing and dancing it with Simcha. And says the Svona, Anything that is executed, it's expedited, the simcha, then it becomes internalized. And if it's internalized, the only way to expunge it, to extricate it from the person, is to traumatize them. So Moshe Rabbeinu, when he saw now that they were doing it the simcha, he had to shock them, traumatize them by breaking the luchas. Interestingly enough, this Svona is brought by many Sifrei Chesidus as a raya to the upside of Simcha that one internalizes it. In this instance, it was a negative experience, but it could be positive. Simcha helps something become internalized. There's a tshuva from Reb Meisha, <laughs> very, very fascinating tshuva. He's talking about the Shaila of Biko Cholim over the telephone, whether or not somebody's not there. But I'll go upon him, the, during, the, during the tshuva over there, in the process of the interaction with the Shail and his tshuva, there's a Sefer Ikrim that's quoted that says something similar to what the Nitziv says. Sevikim says that the experiencing, being witnessing it, is, adds another dimension and brings a raya from Meisha Abena. And the Meisha in the Tshuva says that he can understand how it's possible to say such a thing. Meisha Abena's Nevoa is Aspakaya Meiva. It's another, it's not through an opaque lens. It's with total and utter clarity. And he couldn't have been missing anything. It was as if he was there. You can't, you can't say that there's more information or something that is added on later 
by actually witnessing for himself. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein applies this to the difference between being present, where somebody is nisragesh by seeing the chayla, and he davens more because of that. He uses it for the, for the tshuva, the, the actual person, and that doesn't happen on the telephone. It happens by personally being there. I'll call upon him. So says Rav Meisha. So it would seem that we have a few positions here. We have a position that the the Medrash indicates that there was there was no other reason other than to teach us that a Dayan should wait till he sees for himself. Which means that whatever he had to know, he knew. Because that's the only reason to wait. And that's to be instructive to us for future generations. The Svana does indicate that something was missing. The, I, the feature, the, the information, the data of the Simcha. And that required something. And again, that becomes a question whether or not, according to Rav Meisha, that it would seem that that couldn't be missing. The same kasha that he asks on the Sefer Ikrim, he'll ask on the, on the Svona. There's a some Sefer in Pausha's Dvorah. Some Sefer brings the first few psukim where Moshe Abenu identifies all the locations where he gave Teichachot to Klal Yisrael. He gave the Teichachot, Midbatzin, Teizohot, Chatzeros. Each one has some pirush, some allusion, but he goes through the geography. The Medrash asks, what do we need all the geography for? What does it make to us? Okay, so one who would seem to be, it's not just geography because there's there are levels of meaning that are being communicated with each name. But so asks the Medrash. Possibly there could have been another way of doing it without spreading it across locations. Answers the Medrash because there were those people, Moshe Ben is going to give Teichacha. And if he gives Teichacha, he's going to get their dander up, as they say. There's going to be a, re a reaction. And they're going to want to dismiss the teichachah. And one way to dismiss it is saying, ah, he's an old man, Sina, he's out of it. So in order to anticipate, to ambush that possible rebuttal to the, to the rebuke, Moshe Abeno says, this happened here, this happened there. He shows them that he's functioning at optimal level. To anticipate that problem. So ask the Medrash and answers the Medrash. Ask that some safer. Are you talking? We have Sukkim that teach us that Moshe Ben Noi Nos Loi Kea Eno. He was. And he seems to assume that it must have been obvious if the POSIC says that he was physically in top form, that must have been evident and clear. How could there have been such a havamin mean, that they couldn't, it couldn't have gotten started such a, such a time, such a disclaimer? Says the Chsam Sefer, we have a machlekes between the Babli and the Yerushalmi on whether or not the Bekiya Le'ir, the breaking into the city, was on Shiva Osaba Tammuz and Bayas Rishon. Bayas Sheni, that's what it was, going to the Babli, quotes the Psukim in Yemiyohu, it was on Tess, the breaking into the city. That was Bayas Sheni is Yud Zion. We're closer to the tragedy of Bayashani, so we fast Bayashani. The tour even brings that a Balnefesh Yachmel Atzmai, 
that there is an Indian to fast on Tess as well, but we don't put two consecutive Tainasim on the Tzibu with such close proximity. Tesis brings the Ushami, and the Ushami says, no, Bayasurishan was also on Yud Zayin. The Pasik says, Tess, says the Ushami, Kilkul Cheshbainas Hayakam. They got confused about the dating, the, the suffering, the devastation was such that they were overwhelmed. And therefore, the Navi made a mistake. As a civilian, the way I understand the Chsam Sefer's explanation of the Yerushalmi is that the moment of truth, the Navi knew that it had been a mistake. But the Rebbe Nisham is mitzavah to him to be mansiach, put it down for Davis, that even it should be a testimony to how bad the suffering was, that even somebody of the caliber of Yemiyah Novi could be so confused from all the suffering that he, tragedy that he witnessed. Machlech is Babli in the Ushami. And continues the Chsam Sefer, Im came. this is what the Medrash is teaching us. The Medrash is saying, surely Moshe Abenu was in top physical form, and it was evident, it was clear, anybody that met him thought he was young. But since there would be a future Novi, Yemiyahu would get confused by witnessing all of the tragedy that he lived through. Meshe Rabbeinu was privy to everything that would happen to Klai Yisrael throughout the Davis, by Yisrishim, by Yisheni, the Inquisition, Meneki, all the pogroms, Leminehem, the Shoah, Hakol, Bikol, Kol. Moshe Rabbeinu saw it all. And if Moshe Rabbeinu saw it all, then one might have a half a minute and he'd get confused. Komash Malon, that no, he didn't get confused. That's what the Medrash is teaching you. Though Yemiyahu in the future would get confused, Meshe Rabbeinu did not get confused. Ask the Ksam Sefer, or Gufa Kasha, how come Yemiyahu would get confused and Meshe Rabbeinu did not get confused? Ksam Sefer answers that Meshe Rabbeinu also witnessed the Geula. He saw the light at the other end of the tunnel. Yemiyahu knew there would be it, but he didn't have an equal experience of Nevoah of seeing the Gula. Moshe Rabbeinu, there was an equation. Whatever tragedy he saw, he also witnessed the, the ultimate Gula. And therefore, he didn't get confused. So asked the Chsam Sefer and answers the Chsam Sefer. The question we should ask is, there would seem to be a more elementary, basic answer to the difference between Yemiyahu's situation, his getting confused by Bayez Lisha, and Moshe Rabbeinu's not getting confused by seeing all the tragedies that would unfold in Jewish history. Is Yemiyahu was living through it. Moshe Rabbeinu witnessed it in and perhaps we could differentiate between the reality, the experiential reality of living through it, where one is impacted on one level, as opposed to merely seeing it benevur. The Chsam Sefer does not give that tevet, which indicates that the Chsam Sefer holds that Moshe Abeno's experience of Aspakal Yameira is the equivalent of living through it. And that's why he comes on and gives the terrets of the, that it's not, it was the seeing the gula that 
saved Moshe Rabbeinu from getting confused. If so, then it's clear that the Chesam Sefer holds that Aspakal Yamila Meira is exactly the same as living through it. Otherwise, he should have used that as the, the difference between Yamiyoho and Moshe Rabbeinu. That means that he would not say what the Sefer Ikram says, and he would not say what the Nitziv says, that Moshe Rabbeinu heard this an eagle, waits till he comes down and sees for himself, and only breaks it then because he's in the spoil when he sees it. According to the Chesam Sefer, then, as according to Reb Meisha Feinstein, we would say that it means that it's the exact equivalent. That's not why Moshe Rabbeinu waited. The whole experience was identical. So we could say he waited, like the Medrash says. The Medrash says that Moshe Rabbeinu waited in order to be instructive for Davis that a future Dayan, if he could see for himself, wait. Moshe Rabbeinu did not have to wait, but future Dayanim would gain something by waiting. So that's the reason. It's, to be, it's didactic, it's educational. There's a reason to, to wait. The Moshe Chochma just wants to know why Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchas. He's not dealing specifically with this question of why he waited. What was the point in breaking the Luchas? Everything Moshe Rabbeinu does is instructive for Davis. The Rebbe of Kayasa, Teres Moshe, everything Moshe Rabbeinu does or says is, is a lesson. Says the Moshe Chochma, at the moment of the Luchas Rishainus, Luchas Rishainus uh, somehow carved by the Rebani Shalom Kaviyocho miraculously, the Ksav is miraculous. There's nothing in the world that could be described as more holy at that moment, more Kodesh. Says the Meshe Chochma, quoting the Rambam, what was the mistake of the original of the Aveda Zohar is that they related to the Rebbeinu Shleilam's structuring of the universe as if it was a corporate structure. And the Rebbeinu Shleilam appointed, designated executive authority. This one's in charge of this, that one's in charge of that, because it's based on a, really an anthropomorphism, that thinking of the Rebbeinu Shleilam in human terms, that there's a limit to how much information, how much data can be handled, and therefore there's a necessity to, to make divisions and departments and executives, which is a fundamental mistake. But eventually, they, didn't, they weren't foolish enough to think that it wasn't all initiated by this supreme intelligence, but that he created afterwards this corporate structure and delegated authority. And then eventually it becomes propitious, it becomes kidai, to ingratiate oneself with each one of these department heads because they have a certain amount of a margin <coughs> to award goodies. <coughs> and then they become an end in themselves. It's a slippery slope. Says Rameer Simcha, what better way to rebut this thesis, this mistake, to think that there's anything in the Bria that is autonomous, that's self-contained, that's self-propelled? No such thing. It's mechadish betuvoi tomid kol yom maisa breishis. Every moment. It's being reinvented. Not rediscovered, reinvented. And so, nothing holier than the Luchas, Moshe Rabbeinu says, in order to impact, to dramatize 
This reality is going to break the holiest thing, the thing that's most Kodesh, these miraculous luchas, and smash it in front of them to teach them. Would it have been a preference to go through history with luchas rishenis? Of course. But similarly, says Rumei Semcha, it was a preference to go through history with a bias Rishon, then with a bias Shani, to be an Elch Yisrael. But Klal Yisrael will always have a contingency plan. There's a Bidyevid fallback position. When somehow we fail, it's a bear market spiritually, not a bull market. And we fail, and we're in chapter 11. We can yet and will yet survive in Golas without a base Migdash. What we need is the Dalet Amas of Halacha. That is, there is a contingency relationship. Without the Dalet Amas of Halacha, without the Bote Midroshim, the Bote Knixias, we can't survive. But we can always build a base Midrash whether it's in Baghdad or Cairo or in Brooklyn, we'll build a base Madrash and there'll be a Dalit Amas of Halacha. And so, Rabbi Simcha says that's the point of the Luchas had to be broken to teach Klal Yisrael this Yisrael. Now, if so, who had to witness the breaking of the Luchas? Klal Yisrael. It wouldn't have been enough for Moshe Rabbeinu to break the luchas on Har Sinai. For him, he was nispoil as if he had seen it. He saw it, as Meira, like a Moshe, like the Chsam Sefer. But Klad Yisrael, in the Loshan of the Posik, is Meduya Le'ene Yisrael, that Moshe Rabbeinu had to smash the luchas. It had to be experiential for them. For them, there would be a difference, a gap, between Ria and Shmir. Moshe Rabbeinu would all coalesce, it all came together in the Aspakal Yemeiva. One of the, one of the Nisim by Maimon Arsina was Reim as a Kailas. Hard for us to grasp what that means, obviously, but the little glimpse that we get of it. Pardon the pun. The glimpse that we get of Reim Mesakalis. Posik says, in the Ve'ei Rei Anochi, Noisen Lefnechem Mesabocha Vesar Klova. Balatulim says, Rei Anochi, look at the Anochi of Anochi Hashem Alokecha, where there was Reim Mesakalis. One of the primary differences between Ria and Shmir is that Shmir you experience sequentially. Becomes a third sound if there are two together. If A and B are sounded together, it becomes a new sound C. Ria we see panoramically. Medosh Yandeno Rambeno on Parsha Sa'e asks, Ma'ala Odom shall be Yisrael la hafsik, la hafsik be kriyat ha tochecha. Can you make hafsokas in the tochecha? No. Question is obvious. Why is that medrash over here? Why is the question here should be with the tochecha? Rameh Simcha says, Memariva, had Moshe Rabbeinu spoken to the seller, which the Chaim HaKodesh says something very similar, it would have been a reinforcement of Roya Mesakailas, the speaking to the seller and making it deliver the water through speech would have been a reinforcement of Roya Mesakailas. And that was forfeited by hitting the rock. Rameh Simcha's take on Mei Mariva. And it does say, Daber Sasele Le'enehem. Le'enehem is all. Question is, why should that have to go through history to be reinforced, that ness of Rehem Asakolis? But perhaps it's this medrash, Bielam Dein Rabbeinu, 
Can you make Havsokas in the Kriya of the Teichach or not? There are two ways to relate to all of the suffering of Klad Yisrael in history. Choben by Yisrish and Choben by Yisheni, the Inquisition, and Hako Biko Kol all the way through history, up until our times, including our times, unfortunately. Al Tiftach Peh. Shmiyadik or Riyadik, you take each event in isolation, discrete happenings. Shmiyadik. Built in this bow, can't be handled. Or you take it Riyadik. You see it panoramically. It begins with a bliss vein of Solon, and it's going to climax with Bias Hagoyal. It's a talif, it's a process. Re'eyanochi. Re'eyanochi says the Medrash. That's why it's here. That we have to approach it riyadik. Times in Jewish history haven't been many, but there have been such times in the time of Shlema Melech when there was a Reiv Minyan and Binyan of Kal Yisrael were fulfilling mitzvahs. Other times, percentages were less. Hard to believe that there was a time when there were so few percentage-wise in the totality of Klal Yisrael. That in itself constitutes a Chil Hashem. And frequently, the rebuttal that we hear from the naysayers is that we're out of it. We haven't been brought into the modern world. We're experiencing a cultural senility. Like the Medrash says about Meisha Rabbeinu, they wanted to say to dismiss the Teichacha. Why should we take you people seriously? You're not with it. You haven't been updated. You're still living in an archaic universe. It's the ghetto image. But then there are some who look and see a certain healthiness in our tzibur. Loin los leicha, loin keya There's a certain healthiness here. Another difference of Ria and Shmir is Shmir, I have to be close. Ma efshalit sapot, what can in shame for Langen? What can you expect of somebody who was brought up in a home, he didn't hear his father Davin, he didn't hear him learn, he didn't hear a culture. You have to be close to him. He wasn't close. But the Rebani Shalom implanted in every Jewish heart the ability, the capacity to be royim as a place. He can see a certain healthiness, a certain vibrancy in our community. Do we have our failings? We know. Of course, we're the first ones to call attention to it. Warts and scars. But it's so incomparably better than anything else that exists, that there's a healthiness that's projected. The chesed, the family relationships. That's royim as hakolos, to see that health. That's experiential. And that's ma'ayra, the question. Then there's a question, fine. We open up our homes. The Tony de Eliyahu speaks about it, opening one's home, bringing them to share, to participate. It's not just a nice thing to do. It's our obligation, because there's a matzah, there's a state of Chilol Hashem out there. And we have to redress that Chilol Hashem, that rov minyan of binyan of klal yourself are not participating. And the vast majority, it's out of Amaratzis. 
And just like the Marshal says that Anils Chazal, the Gemara on the Dome says, Ein anim das. There's no greater poverty than intellectual poverty. Says the Marsha, most people think that it's an analogy, that just like there's economic poverty, we're extending the term to apply to intellectual poverty. Masha says it works the other way. The source of the term is intellectual poverty. Just that frequently somebody who is economically deprived will be in a state of poverty intellectually because he doesn't have options. He's so restricted. And when Chazal say that kol hamonea, anybody that deprives a Jew from learning a halacha deprives means now I don't go into the base medish and take away his safer. I don't go put a blindfold on him. It means I don't invite him into the base medish. I'm not sharing with him. The mashor on the spot in the Gemara and Chelek says that it's not just talking about not sharing with somebody who knows how to learn. It means if somebody says, he's too far away, I can't be a of him. That's being monea halocha from him. Because we have to position him, get him to the point. Le'enei yisa, le'enei him. He has to be royem as a koilis. He has to hear the koilis, you have to bring him close. Ria from the vikings, yeah. But the shmir is going to be the koilis. Take a look at the lotion in the Gemara, in Chelek, Tzadik Aleph, Omid Beis, about the responsibility of not depriving a Jew of knowing how to learn. And I'll just leave you with this. I want to take it one step further. People are out there and working in Kiruv. Is it enough? Said he's going to be a Shema Shabbos. Said he's going to Davon. He's going to keep cautious. It's wonderful. Major breakthrough. But why is that less if this candidate could become a Ben Teira and he could learn how to learn? Why is that less of a Monea, a Dvaha Locha, from a Jew? You can't force anybody to do anything. But if somebody can become more of a Ben Teva, then the quality of his life, his family life, his relationship to his children, his relationship to his Beire, is fundamentally, essentially, qualitatively different than if he's condemned to be an Amoritz. Is there a virtue is it to be applauded any level of Shmir Smith? Of course, but not to be Monea. But then he has to hear the sounds. He has to participate. Otherwise, there's a lingering suspicion that in moments of stress, maybe there is a certain senility in this culture. Whatever I do, I get extra points for. More than required. Look how many people are not doing anything. Everybody has a Yetzirah. Gentlemen, any one of us today is a potential Makarov, directly or indirectly. Any one of us can get somebody to the point of having a certain curiosity and admiration for who we are, Royam Esakailas. But that's not enough. It's not enough. We have to 
get them closer wherever and however possible to know that it's chaos and that they have to be oiskim bedivrei teira and they have to taste the tam of a yagir. 45 years of experimentation here at Osamer, we think we're getting to do it better. Many of you will come along and introduce Chidushim and help us for more Chidushim and how to do it even better. But this has been established where somebody enters into the world of a Bayan Rova and becomes integrated into that world and he tastes the tam of Yagir Betera. He was not Nimna, he wasn't prevented by feeling relaxed and that he can make a brocha, he had a kezayis of kiruv and exposure. He doesn't, no, no brocha choina. Can't, he can't, that's each individual case. But if there is such a possibility, it's incumbent upon every one of us to make it attractive, to be mare es akoilis, and as much as possible to share the exhilaration, the singular simcha that comes from Yegi and Taylor. Batzloch Ogrocha. Thank you.